guys. Happy Friday. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you guys are here today. First of all, I just want to thank each and every one of you who left me a beautiful comment on last week's video about my Cali girl. Um, it made me cry reading all of them. I read all of them, but it also made me feel really good. And some of you shared personal stories. Some of you gave advice on dealing with it, talking to my kids, um, just feeling better about it. So I just want to thank all of you. That really meant a lot to me and I appreciate you guys so much. Um, for those of you that are new, my name is Orly and this is the DIY designer. I do DIY fashion on this channel. Sometimes I do home decor and beauty, but the bulk of what I do is DIY fashion. I am entirely obsessed with taking basic pieces that are readily available and making them incredible and one of a kind, something that really represents your unique style so that you feel amazing when you're wearing it. And I always try to make it something that's really easy and simple um, that pretty much anyone can do. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're making these killer tulle skirts. Now, we're gonna be taking store-bought tulle skirts and creating statement pieces from them. I'm really stoked. The skirts came out in Incredible. I am wearing mine for our little Christmas shindig we're gonna do here at the house It's really fun to get glammed up even if you can't go to a party this year Do it in your own house wear your heels wear a skirt put on the jewelry have some fun I didn't do a material shot. I just forgot So basically all that you need is a tool skirt and then there's gonna be a few different versions And I will walk you through what you need for each of those as we do it. Okay. I hope that you love it all right, so when you get started, the first thing that you wanna do is get access to the outermost layer and that's it. So that means you've gotta grab the lining and any additional layers of tool and sort of pull them up through the waist away from your outermost layer. That way they don't stick together. I tried it originally by doing multiple layers and it did not work. Now, this is also the reason why I was saying, I think it just makes most sense for this DIY to buy an inexpensive tool skirt as opposed to try to make one from scratch. Upcycling something that's inexpensive like this is just the smartest move for this DIY. Now, for this one, what I'm doing is a splatter glitter paint. So you can see I protected my surface underneath and I end up coming up with a much better way to do this, which I'll show you in a minute. But basically, grab your fabric Mod Podge, a paintbrush, and just whoosh, whoosh, over and over until you get all of these really cool splatters. I would do about 10 splatters at a time so that they don't have a chance to dry and then grab your chunky glitter. You're gonna sprinkle the chunky glitter as opposed to fine glitter on top of each of the little splatters. Once it shakes off, it's gonna look like a splatter of glitter. It is so cool and it looks incredible in person. So you're gonna do the next section. Once you've finished your first round of let's say 10 to 15 splatters, you're gonna go ahead and splatter more. You wanna obviously like evenly space them out, make sure that you work your way up towards the waistband so that you have some nice splatters and glitter up higher at the waistband and not only around the bottom of the skirt. Now, this is really important. I'd say after about 20 to 30 minutes, when it is maybe like 50% dry, you wanna separate it from the surface that you were splattering on. Mod Podge is a glue and tool is really, really thin, which means that there's some glue on the back side of this tool. If I just let it sit here until everything was fully dry, it would actually dry and stick to the paper or the drop cloth or whatever you're doing and it would be really hard to pull it apart. So while it's still kind of damp and it could be pulled apart, but dry enough that now when it lays, it's not gonna stick to the surface, you're gonna do that. You're gonna sort of pull it apart and separate it and then leave it there to dry. Now I was moving on to another one while that section was drying and basically I thought it would be really fun to do like almost like a sprinkle or like confetti glitter skirt. So what I'm doing is taking a paintbrush and my Mod Podge and I'm doing really thick brush strokes. What you want is that the Mod Podge is a like attractive looking brush stroke because we're gonna glitter this afterwards and whatever the brush stroke looks like is what the glitter is gonna look like. So that's why I like how there's sort of more concentrated areas of the Mod Podge and I sort of go over them until I like the shape of each of them. Once you get the hang of this, this goes very fast, but do again, like maybe five at a time, grab your glitter. And for this one, I'm doing fine glitter, although I kind of wish I had done chunky because I think it just sparkles a little bit more. And I'm using sort of like classic Christmassy colors because I thought this would be a really fun, like super bold statement skirt for the holidays. However, if you want to make this something that's more of, again, like sprinkles, you could do all those really cool pastel colors. So anyway, you're gonna go and, and really what you're doing is making sure that you are 
like alternating colors. So I make sure that I'm putting, you know, I'm not putting two greens right next to each other. I'm not putting two golds right next to each other. I'm really just making sure that I'm creating balance so that it looks like all the colors are evenly sort of sporadic. Now, this is what it looks like while it's still drying. Obviously, the glitter is kind of all over the place. It's got the paper underneath it, and we're not really getting a sense of what it looks like yet. But this is the first section that I did. Now, Again, after about a half an hour, you can see it's already drying a little bit more than I wanted. So I'm very carefully pulling it up from the paper. So again, that's when you wanna make sure to catch it kind of in that sweet spot about 20 minutes when it is dry enough that the glitter is stuck but not so dry that it's officially glued down to your surface. Now I'm laying it down and I'm gonna give it some time to dry before I move on to my next one. I put it in the sun and you can see like I shook off the excess glitter, it's sparkling, it looks so cool. It's gonna be really awesome. Now this is what I was talking about this is how you want to set it up so that you can actually do this really quickly and very efficiently this tool skirt is a circle skirt so I can just open it up fully into a circle put a drop cloth or whatever you want underneath to protect your surface and bunch up the lining and the extra layers of tool right in the middle so that again you're only working on that outermost layer now this allows you to work so fast because you're not letting each individual triangle dry before you can move on to the next one you're able to just do all of the glitter and all of the Mod Podge all at once, let it have its 20 minutes to dry, separate it, and then just leave it there to dry. So this rest of this process is really just a step and repeat. You're really just making sure that you're alternating colors, that you never have two of the same color next to each other. The more colors you have, obviously the easier this is gonna be, but it's just those slightly rounded brush strokes, maybe five or six at a time. You're then gonna add your color, leave it out to dry, remember to separate it before it's fully dry, and then just leave it, let it do its thing. I obviously went ahead and did the same thing with the rest of the splatter skirt. I laid the skirt out, did all of my splatter and my glitter, and I let the this one dry. I can't wait for you guys to see what these look like on. They are so fun. Quick little disclaimer uh, that I forgot to film, but I do think is really important for this one. After your glitter is done, whether you do the brush strokes or you do the splatter, I really recommend one final step, which is gonna take a minute, but I think it's really worth it. Grab a little bit of Mod Podge in a bowl and a paintbrush and paint on top of your glitter with a paintbrush. The Mod Podge will seal the glitter. It'll be right, it'll be totally white, but then it'll dry crystal clear and it will prevent any flaking from happening. If you don't do that, you can shake your skirt out to get rid of any excess flakes, but I promise you it will continue to flake and you'll end up with glitter like all over the place. So I really recommend that final step. Just seal it in, go over it, like back over each one with Mod Podge, let it dry and then you are good to go. Okay, let's move on to the last one, which is these really cool like appliques that we're gonna do, it's so fun. All right, moving on to the next one. This is trim that I bought downtown. Now it was $13 a yard and you can see it's basically these individual little flowers that I knew I could kind of cut apart and make little tiny appliques. I liked the silver because it wasn't so bright and sparkly. It kind of felt vintagey, which I thought would be nice and understated and not like cheesy. I didn't want it to look a little girl skirt. So what I'm gonna do is just cut apart each of the flowers. Like you saw on the back, they're connected by this mesh, but there's no beading. So I'm not cutting through any beading. They cut clean. And when I'm done, I end up with all of these little, um, little flowers. So I separated the flowers into two sections. It was raining outside, so I wasn't gonna be able to do what I did for the uh, other skirts where I could lay the entire thing out. So I'm working half at a time. Basically, I've got half of my skirt facing me now and I'm taking half of the little flower so I make sure to keep an even amount for both sides. And I'm just starting to kind of lay them out, get a sense of what I think is gonna look good. Now, when you're doing something like this, because this trim is more expensive and it's not just glitter and Mod Podge, I actually recommend having your saturated part where there's more higher up because you need less in order to have high impact. Obviously, you can see the shape of the skirt, right? You can see it's only a few inches wide on top and then towards the bottom, it spreads out and gets really, really huge. A lot of those little flowers are gonna get lost on the bottom because there's so much volume. So it makes more sense to make them nice and clustered up top because you're gonna see every single one of them and then sort of fade out as you go towards the bottom. Now, I'm gonna fabric glue these on. I thought I would just tack them down with fabric glue and then go in and kind of hand stitch them, but this was plenty strong. Again, the tool is so thin and these guys lay flat that like all I had to do was put a little glue on the outside, 
push it down and then pull it up from the surface so it didn't dry on my table. So I like push it down and then I grab the tool and I kind of lift it up, making sure that it is really only dry to the tool. I, I don't know how to explain like how it wasn't a bigger issue, but it really wasn't. It, it just sort of hovered on the tool sitting there and never got stuck to the surface beneath it. So I'm going through and basically just, you know, it's again, step and repeat. You lay them out first, get your design. Once everything is in place, you pick up one at a time, glue it and put it back down. That way you know exactly where they go. So now you just kind of want to grab at them, make sure that everything is tacked down. If you find one that's not, obviously grab it, add some glue and pop that sucker down. Now our front is done or our back, whatever. One side is done. So now I'm going to grab access to the other side and I'm just going to do the exact same thing using up the rest of the flowers. Now I did save about 10 flowers because I knew I wanted to put it on the dress form and look at it and sort of figure out if I was missing anything, if something felt imbalanced or like there was a hole. There were a couple of spots on the top where I felt like I had kind of these little gaps and I wanted to pop in just a few more. And then you'll see on the bottom as I slope down, this is why I was talking about you don't want to put too many on the bottom because they kind of can get lost. You can't guarantee how the skirt is going to fall. And so even though some of these are being pinned on the outside, when I move, they might get sort of sucked in on the inside because the skirt has so much volume. So that's the reason why I think it's better to be saturated up here and fade down to the bottom. Now I grabbed some black elastic thinking I might swap out, like cover up the waistband to give it a different look. Just wanted to share that in case you guys don't love the waistband on yours. Obviously, you can cover it with a belt or a different elastic, whatever you want. Now, these are the last couple that need to be glued down. Anything with a pin is what I did on the dress form, and it's really just time for me to go take it off of the dress form, lay it on the table, add a little bit of glue to each one so that everything is nice and tacked down. So when you're doing it, just remove the pin like right when you add the glue. Do your little outline of glue, put it right back where it was so that you make sure to put it exactly where you wanted it. Push it down and kind of pull the tool at the same time so it doesn't stick. And that's it, we're done. Okay, that's it. That's it. I'm gonna model these. I don't have the black one to model because I gave it to someone at work who loved it. So I do not have the black one, but I'm gonna model the two sort of blush pink tan tone ones. They are so fun. I hope that you guys do this project. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and take a look at all the rest of the videos I do. I release videos every Friday and I have a bonus one on Sunday. Um, I didn't get to do the bonus one I wanted last week because of everything that was going on with my family, but I've got this amazing tinsel situation happening, uh, which I'm really stoked about. So, all right guys, I will go model for you. Talk about it